Hello, I'm Herb Halling and I'm a member of the Los Angeles International Fern Society. What you see today on this video are my own thoughts and not necessarily those of the International Fern Society. But most of what I know about platysariums I have learned from people in the Fern Society that are highly trained in botany. They were a great bunch of people. Today I'm going to introduce you to a new platysarium in my collection that not a lot of people in America know about or have the opportunity to see in botanical gardens. But before I begin, let me tell you about a new YouTube video I found on the reproductive cycle of ferns, which, is, which was extracted from the amazing lives of plants by Dr. Larry Jensen. I found it the best presentation I've ever seen on how platysariums propagate via spore. Growing from spore involves a lot more stages in the reproductive cycle than growing from seeds, and this animated video details it all. I will leave a link down below. Okay, I'm going to talk about the cabbage staghorn today. The cabbage staghorn is unlike any other staghorn you have seen. However, it does have some similarities with some other staghorns. The shield fronds grow vertical and have many folds that look like a cabbage plant, and that is probably where it gets its name. The cabbage staghorn is similar to the four large staghorns such that they do not form volunteer pups and can only propagate by spore. Among the four large staghorns, we three have two spore patches on each fertile frond, namely the Platycerium grandi, the Platycerium holtumii, and the Platycerium wande. The only large Platycerium with one spore patch on each fertile frond is the Platycerium superbum. The cabbage staghorn has only one spore patch per fertile frond. Therefore, we consider the cabbage staghorn a cultivar of the Platycerium superbum. However, it would not surprise me if it became its own species sometime in the future after more is learned about the cabbage staghorn and we get some DNA test results. The cabbage staghorn is smaller than the typical Platycerium superbum, but not what I would consider a dwarf. From the pictures I have, they suggest the cabbage staghorn is about 30 inches from top to bottom and about 20 inches wide. The plant pictured has two fertile fronds and they do not appear very large. Since there are two fertile fronds, I assume this plant is not a young cabbage staghorn and all its natural traits have resolved. The color is light green, suggesting it has been growing in a bright location, whereas darker fronds tend to suggest more shade. You'll find this trait on most platysariums. The more sun, the lighter the shade of green or, appearance, or the appearance of a silver tint. The darker the shade cloth, the darker the green. The cabbage staghorn is found growing in the same regions of eastern Australia as the Platycerium superbum, and our friends down under are the source of most of my information. There's also mention of a Platycerium superbum cabbage dwarf, but little is known about this plant. We have an image, but can't tell if it's a cabbage dwarf or just a young cabbage staghorn. We also have a photo from Pinterest of two dwarfed cabbage staghorns. Well, that is about all I can tell you about the cabbage staghorn fern. If you liked this video and thought it was educational, please click on the thumbs up li link below, and that will suggest to YouTube that other platysarium lovers might enjoy this video. And if you want to see more of my videos, take a moment to subscribe to my channel. It does not cost anything to subscribe to my channel, and you do not need a credit card to subscribe. Once you subscribe, YouTube will display my videos when you log on to YouTube. After you hit the subscribe button below, make sure you click on the bell button 
and that tells YouTube to send you a message when a new video is available. Well, that's it for now, mates. Have fun and grow those staghorns.